For the Federal Reserve, controlling inflation is a little like playing a game of darts, just scored differently. It uses its tools to aim for that bullseye, which in this case is 2%. 2% inflation target. 2% target. And just like with darts, the Fed doesn't always hit the center. The process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go. But even getting close can help keep inflation in check. Here's how 2% became the Fed's bullseye and why that number can help guide the health of the entire economy. So where did the Fed come up with this target in the first place? The answer, New Zealand. Suffering from persistent inflation in the 1980s, the country's reserve bank initially set an inflation target between zero and 2%. Central banks didn't used to tell people what they were doing. And in the 1990s, they began to experiment more with, hey, if we tell people what it is we're actually trying to do, then maybe it'll make it easier for us to achieve those goals. It's a strategy called anchoring. When consumers and businesses know where inflation should run, it's easier for them to set prices and spend in a way that's consistent with that goal. And that then helps the Fed set policies to maintain that level of inflation. Think of it as the bullseye at the center of the Fed's monetary policy. If you think prices are gonna be higher in a year, you'll demand higher wages now. So there can be a self-fulfilling element to inflation expectations. Though targeting has been in the Fed's conversation for decades, the U.S. only officially adopted inflation targeting in 2012, when the Fed was chaired by Ben Bernanke. Clearly communicating to the public this 2% goal for inflation over the longer run should help foster price stability and moderate long-term interest rates and will enhance the committee's ability to promote maximum employment in the face of significant economic disturbances. So what's so special about the number two? There isn't a lot of empirical research that says we've analyzed all the different outcomes and 2% is the right number for these reasons. That's really not how uh, central bankers came up with 2%. The idea was you wanted to have a, a level of inflation that was low enough that people wouldn't pay attention to how high prices were going up. For the Fed, the number two achieves a few things. For starters, it's not so low that the economy risks deflation, which is when prices fall and can lead to lower wages and higher unemployment. The economy was at risk for deflation during the Great Recession between 2007 and 2009. Falling prices for a central bank can actually be a worse state of affairs than rising prices because if people think prices are gonna be lower tomorrow, they won't spend today, and that can be very hard to get out of. Lower inflation also reduces the Fed's ability to lower interest rates because rates tend to move together with inflation. If you have a 0% target, you'll probably have lower interest rates, and the concern would be you'd have less room to stimulate the economy when you go into a recession. But 2% is also thought of as not too high. High inflation can weaken consumers' spending power. And the concern would be that inflation might actually creep too high, and then you'd get into a world of self-sustaining price increases where higher prices feed on themselves. And that's a cycle the Fed doesn't want to find itself in. The Fed wants inflation to hit as close to 2% as it can over time to maintain a healthy economy. But sometimes it misses. Through the 2010s, some economists were concerned that inflation was consistently running too low. A new policy in 2020 called Flexible Average Inflation Targeting tries to account for some of those periods. Rather than always aiming for the bullseye, the Fed tries to set policy to balance out periods of lower inflation with periods of slightly higher inflation, with the goal of averaging out at 2% over time. The worry was that the anchor on inflation expectations was actually drifting too low. And so you could recenter it by saying, look, we, we really want to make sure people don't think 2% is a hard ceiling. It's a target. If we're below it for a little while, we can be above it somewhat for a little while. But not everyone agrees with the Fed's 2% target strategy. One concern is that monetary policy is imprecise. You know, monetary policy is a blunt instrument. This is more like going to see a barber than having a surgery. Some also argue that a higher rate of inflation leaves more room for the Fed to adjust interest rates to avoid a recession. Whether or not inflation targeting is actually effective is difficult to measure. Inflation did settle for a time after the policy was implemented in New Zealand in the 90s, in conjunction with a number of other measures. 
and it's still relatively new in the U.S. As we've discovered, there are shocks that can hit the economy, and you know it's it's difficult to judge in real time. I think whether this is the right strategy. Currently, the Fed reviews the framework of its monetary policy every five years. The idea that the Fed would make some kind of change to its inflation target in the next couple of years seems like a big stretch. But they could debate at the margins, are there different nuances that our formal strategy document hasn't captured? And those are the sorts of things that you might expect to see in the deliberations around any further review of the framework. But for now, 2% remains the bullseye it will keep aiming for.